Good morning, friends. This is Rani Sahai from People the Resilience Lab. We are a small grassroots organization based in Bhagalpur in Bihar, in Eastern India. And our main mandate is working on reviving a small river which we call Champa over here. It is a very small tributary of uh, River Ganga, and it is uh, located right beside the town of Bhagalpur. It has a small watershed, and the river has been a, an ancient river known for many uh, historical incidents by the side of the river. It is dying now. The river is dying now. So this organization, People the Resilience Lab, was established to revive this river. But we are trying to make a systemic change. We are trying to bring about a long-term change. And for that, we are trying to do a lot of ecosystem-based uh, activities, which is geared towards reviving the river. We are celebrating our fourth foundation day. This is our fourth foundation week, and we decided to do a learning event for this purpose. And so we are here meeting together. We, this, is the last, this is the last and the final day of our uh, knowledge event for the foundation week of People the Resilience Lab. We have invited uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar Biradar. He's a scientist with ICADA, International Center for Agricultural Research in Dryland Areas. Uh, I have known Chandrasekhar uh, for around, it's now 20 years. Uh, we were at IIRS, Indian Institute of Remote Sensing together. And uh, though we were just introduced over there, my husband later joined International Water Management Institute where he was also a scientist. Uh, uh, Chandrasekhar was a scientist. And it was there that we met again. And uh, now, Currently, he is a scientist. He's a, are you a deputy director with uh, ICADA? You are a director with ICADA, uh, Chandrasekhar? No, I'm the head and uh, research team leader. Okay. Head of the geoinformatics and uh, research team leader of the Agro Dislike in India. Okay. So it's a pleasure to see our friends doing so good in various areas, uh, giving services to the mother nature in various ways possible. So today we have invited him to understand from him that uh, what uh, he has been doing, apart from his scientific work, he has also been doing things at his personal level. People who really understand uh, uh, ecology, the nature, and what should be done to uh, take care of it, he has been doing along with his children little, little activities at home also. So as a scientist and as a person, who has been working in uh, this area, uh, we would like, you know, People the Resilience Lab and all its uh, members, uh, participants, and viewers who, who would like to learn from Dr. Chandrasekhar Biradar what he has been doing and what... Hello. Hello. How do we Rani, do we got last year? climate change oh, okay. at, our own, at our individual level. How do we carry out these little... How does these little things impact the nature? Thank you so much. So now I invite Dr. Sandeep uh, to join us in a learning event. Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Yes. So I also request uh, everyone to turn off uh, their uh, the video and uh, microphone so that uh, the bandwidth will be not impacted. And also turn off your uh, microphone so there is no the, the background noise so that everyone can, can hear clearly. So Gautam, Naveed, uh, welcome. Could you turn off your microphone? <laughs> so 
So can you see my screen now? Yes, yes. Okay. So the first of all, thanks to the the, the people resilience lab. They they are doing fantastic work in uh, regenerating the rivers and so many ecological uh, uh, what's called uh, the leverages to bring the people close to the nature. And uh, congrats to Rani, you are doing fantastic. It's a pleasure meeting you again after a long time in uh, IRS and uh, along with uh, Suraj. And it's a pleasure uh, to meet you all. And uh, here is the one we're talking about uh, uh, a biodiversity. And we recently, the, the World End Day, and uh, highlighted that this year is the biodiversity year, theme is biodiversity and back to the nature. And uh, we always uh, look. Uh, the biodiversity is kind of a disconnected from the, our living systems and food is also we're thinking that okay food comes somewhere else why should we worry so here we talk about a biodiversity gardening and vital food systems and how this biodiverse ecosystems leads to sustainable future and uh, when looking to this uh, our CJR consortium from international agricultural research it is uh, a large body across the world they have 15 research centers is the one who work on uh, dryland uh, systems and we are the what we call is the crossroads in the world food systems we cannot continue our current trajectory of consuming, consuming too little or too much in the imbalanced way and uh, wrong tank of the foods all the times it's like an unsustainable and uh, also back to the environment and we have been talking about the living with planetary property for the long time and uh, that's still uh, we are not there yet so living within the planetary boundaries I come back to you on that what is planetary boundary what is sustainable and uh, if you look back uh, very carefully the health is the continuum from the soil planet and humans now you can see the covid systems and i'm sure that everyone felt that uh, how health is so important being immune system strong immune system is uh, very important to beat the virus and often we neglect that food is the one that can build the real immune systems and uh, when you look into the continuum of the life the health it's a family farm that connect that continuum and food is the one thing that links to the every sustainable developmental goals in one way other way so just look at the, the Lancet report recently published uh, what you can see the health boundary here is 100%. So anything within this one that is sustainable, that is good for the planet and good for the people, but anything go outside this uh, the, the circle, the dotted circle, that's for example, like, uh, the meat, uh, potatoes, eggs, like and other things. So they are much outside the planetary boundaries. That leads to the basically the, the monocropping and uh, the inefficient resource uses but you need to move back from that kind of the system to the more wealth per acre in the past we always look at the yield as our domain but not as the the nutrition so what you need to bring a, a balanced ecosystem that strengthens the food and ecological security basically we have the diverse kind of the fruits and vegetables and uh, recycling the nutrients and composting and soil health, so that everything that can link to the system like this. So this is where we bring what we call a push down. This is the only couple of the, the, the food systems are overgrown. And uh, then you can increase the other vegetables, pulses, fruits, nuts into the more. So this is where you bring the diversified the cereal system, livestock in the loop. And livestock is not just only for the meat or milk, but they are the one of the major uh, the what's called a recycling of the waste that bring it back to the palatable to the planets and uh, pulses that's one of the most neglected uh, the the crops in the systems of course the fruits and nuts is coming back so when you look into the, the present of the system we are over over 4000 plant species identified and half of them at least the 200000s are edible to the human consumption so you ever believe that and there is over 6000 the species of the plants are grains or fruits, anything they use as a food. Out of the 6,000, 
only 150 crops are cultivated on the significant scale. And out of that 150, you won't believe, only three crops dominate the food systems. Nearly about 60% of the world food systems, it is wheat, rice, and maize. You won't believe. So that this, see, everything, when we go to the bakery, you see so many different types of food, but there's basically is the wheat, one item. So like that, if across the world you go there, it's mostly, mostly the three types of the crops. So that's basically you're eating the less nutrition, what you call empty calories or the belly full, the hungry cells means your belly is full with this uh, empty calories, but cells, they're not getting what they needed. So this is bring back to us, uh, I just give the example of, uh, here is the pulses of the planet, what you call food legumes. That is one of the most, uh, what you call uh, nature friendly and uh, eco friendly crops to integrate in the cereal systems. And there is about, uh, it's one of the third largest genera and 19,000 known species and 65,000 the land races. That means the different types of the pulses that are grown in India. And I give the one example uh, that Rana said earlier that one uh, in the, the post of the like Praveen Kaswan's uh, the Twitter. And you see, this is the in Uttarakhand alone, they have the 50 types of Rajma. I'm only talking about the one, one type of, of the, the pulse, it's Rajma. There's 50 types. Look at the so many colorful of Rajma. But how many of you know all these things? We're just doing one regular Rajma. So that we're losing a lot of that kind of the biodiversity. And uh, then look into the changing diet pattern. So that used to eat so many different types of the food in the, when I was a kid. And we always about more than 20 to 30 different types of grains at home. Now we can bring down to the only few the crops. And this is the way we need to go back to the, the what's called forgotten uh, food and biodiverse agroecosystems for sustainable diets. For example, when you compare with a plant-based or dal or falafel uh, in one meal, that required about 1,250 liters but you can eat the chicken, mutton, and beef that multiplies the water you use. A plate of uh, the, the what's called uh, mutton or beef, you're consuming about uh, 10 to 15 people meals in one meal. So this is basically need a, a paradigm shift from more calorie per acre to more nutrition health per acre. So this is basically coming back to the what we call the family farms. And even United Nations, they are celebrating the decade of the the families from uh, last year to until next 2028. And uh, the family farm produces about 80% of food in the world. And uh, look into that, so how this the sustainable systems is uh, basically working. When you grow for like, a, now you can see frequent droughts and floods so frequent. One year is a surplus of the rain, flood, other is a drought. So this is very become a most common phenomenon across the world. They have the shift in the season, season becoming shorter, the monsoon comes, the, the last year delayed by one month, this year uh, the early monsoon, this kind of the situation bring it a lot of the system in instability. And what you really need is a building the, the healthy system, healthy food systems, rebuilding the soils. That's where it comes to the family, smart agriculture. And uh, I just uh, talking about this one, like a uh, why food and its vitality. When looking into the present system, so most food produce uh, losses about 30% of the nutrients after three days of harvest. And often some spinach, that is the University of California study shows that 90% uh, of the nutrition lasts in 24 uh, hours of that uh, the, the spinach is harvested. Likewise, the many vegetables they harvested before maturity because of they had to travel from like, uh, from North India to South India, from one country to the other country. They harvest at least about uh, four to five days before, even is before maturity. Then they can spray chemical to not to mature while travel storage. Then before putting into the supermarket cell, they spray and their chemicals to make them mature overnight. For example, banana. Banana harvest about 15 days before. Uh, then one variety of the banana from Ecuador, most of traveling most of the world. They harvest much before the maturity, then uh, they spray chemical to not to mature, then spray chemical to mature like that. So basically you lost a lot of the nutrition uh, in, the, in the transport. I just put this uh, simple example here, how the, the food chain and loss of the nutrition. Mm -hmm. So if you grow in the home garden, basically directly from the, the 
garden to the, your plate, hardly you lose any nutrition there. But if you look at the farmer's market, a local market, still is much better. You're not losing that much. But if you go to the supermarket because of the harvest much before, they discard a lot of things, they spray a lot of the, the, the stuff to keep them look fresh. And a lot of the wastages go in the supermarket because of they only keep the only fresh, good looking one, they throw the rest. And, but in case of the processed one, from food delivery services from the farm, transportation, distribution, packing, repacking, re-delivery, and cooking. So basically, most of the nutrition lost in that process. And not only that nutrition, but there's huge impact on that. So this package, packaging, plastic, transport, storage, what I call it is a long food miles. The longer the food travels, the more the, the food, what's called a carbon footprint of the food. So this is what we need to get connected back to the nature. And uh, I just uh, highlighting this one, uh, one of this, uh, the old quotes I read somewhere in the old, uh, I won't remember the, the, the old book, is one of the Indian proverb. The best investment parents can do for their children is taking them to the nature. Nature takes everything to the children and they become uh, more sensitive to the nature. Once they're sensitive to nature and then that links to the food and links to the even how they behave with the other human beings and animals. So this is one of the key things, the link to the nature. So this is what comes, uh, the joy of growing and eating. So the gardening is not just about only the growing your own food, but it says number of the things. It contributes to the nature, contributes to the, the mm -hmm. provide a habitat to the birds and bees and butterflies. And uh, so many things you can uh, eat a food, what you grow, you know what is growing at the food. But not only that, it reduces a lot of the wastages. For example, you bank the food outside or coming from different places. And also you can do the home composting. You are reducing a lot of the things here. And of course, that's a link to the number of the way you use the lifestyle. And I'm coming back to on that when it comes to the composting. I think um, uh, the, the Regions Lab and Rani itself is doing a lot of these composting videos, a number of those kind of things. And even uh, uh, producing this healthy, uh, what's called uh, cleaning agents at home, something like that. So real joy of the, the growing and eating, it's come from when you grow yourself. So this is my daughter, Thanma, is just uh, harvesting the, the, the tomatoes and how she feel joy when eating those the tomato they harvested. Often my friends ask that, uh, oh, that's all that good, where I can find the space for gardening at home. I say that any space you are living means there is a space for the garden as well. You have space for yourself, space for your furniture, space for anything, but there is a space for your garden as well. So the plant has so diverse species. You can grow on the wall, you not any space. You can grow on the windows, window sills, and small balconies, big terraces, the rooftop, front yard, back yard, even tabletop, and the shelves, even like a bookshelf. I grow a lot of the vegetables in that one. So the space is not the limitation for the open mind. And you can grow even like a couple of the plants in your uh, the tabletop, in the office top. So that shows that a single plant, you can grow how much effort is doing. That connects to the nature and connects to the farmer. Often, the food grown by the farmer, you buy from the supermarket. And uh, that's, that's, you know, the, we don't know the value of that one. How much farmers struggle to grow a single grain or a fruit. He spend uh, three to six months to bring to the market and you just eat and throw the, off the food, fruit away. But when you grow your own food, even you grow that singly and you know the value of that food, you know to waste the food, you value the farming, the produce and the farmers. So this, when when it comes to the, the biodiversity and the rich diversity of the gardens, and it's always, I, I discuss about number of things about what we call a, a biodiversity thinking begins at the home, begins at the kitchens, begins at your own uh, self. So that you can start with uh, someone like a beginner asks me that, sir, I not know how to grow and I not have a green thumb and uh, it's very difficult to grow the plant. I don't know which one shoots the my gamla and my pot or my climate. And always I tell that, okay, don't worry about that. Let the nature decide. You can put all the seeds available there in the local seed, whatever seeds together. You want to dig out from the kitchen shelf, uh, fenugreek, coriander, all the spices, things. You mix them into the small seed balls in the peat moss. You can throw that balls in your uh, garden or in backyard. They grow. The nature will decide that which one is good for your soil and your climate. They retain them. The rest will go away. So that's kind of a simple way to start the beginners to the seed balls. You do not have 
and also the often people tell that is the green thumb green thumb is, is not necessarily everyone is a green thumb as you as long as they have the the thinking to grow i can go i can plant something not only just for the food but decorations and cleaning the air providing this one then also the often i see that the people they grow very small pots and uh, only one pot they grow only when vegetables so that this is what i thought that we have to grow more than one vegetable in the given pot so that's a symbiotic relation is very essential to plant to become uh, resistant to the pests and diseases they talk to each other they have their own way of interacting uh, in the soil rather than in the outside so that they have a lot of fungal mycelia one plant to connect to other plant and this is where comes the plant companionships this is where the the beauty of the multi layer planting and also the choosing the local varieties so that you can of course grow all the exotic varieties but also you can mix with the local varieties so much of the vegetables available often so many vegetables treated as weeds in the system but they are edible if you look out the edible weeds the kind of so many literature available and online in fact the lot of the so most nutritious the food you can grow out of that so when you look at the 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 bardos gardens and uh, that also the when you growing so many different types of the food you were uh, backyard you were farm wherever and you can eat those kind of the food and the taste and flavor is completely different than what you can grow in the chemically or uh, conventional uh, too much input based the food so that flavor is so high and rich that's also begins with the biodiverse gardens and uh, what else you can grow in home gardens i just giving the example of our my backyard garden i grow on over 237 types of vegetables and fruits flowers and herbs you want 63 types of tomatoes you won't believe that i put the picture of what i grown uh, in my backyard while in in america so let us see that all kinds of the colors of the tomatoes you never seen them in the supermarket supermarket you get is one is a red one uh, cherry is an yellow one but there is a black color that is variegated that is blue yeah jet black and uh, like a grape kind of things that is a mango like and long the pear shapes there's so much of the types of the varieties you can grow this is possible to grow if you in the in the in the garden i just talk about only tomato but you can look at the number of other vegetable chilies i grow about 23 of chilies and even beans huh? there's so many types of the beans you can grow i as i mentioned about uh, india used to have 60000 types of the beans and land races the heirlooms and varieties now we are hardly about 12 types of that one so there is so much of uh, the beans they are so nature friendly eco friendly and uh, the what's called a good nutrition and also good for soils and plant and symbiotic and uh, this kind of the things you can try out in the small way you can grow them whatever you like rather than just uh, picking what is available in the market often uh, people ask me that one sir there's a lot of the pest issues in my garden and uh, what to do with that so that the idea of the home gardening is basically the joy of gardening not just for the food it's provide the habitat for the uh, the living soil birds bees butterflies that's one thing and uh, this also provide uh, the good uh, what's called uh, entire network of the living things the small the biome and microclimate within the small even single pot and uh, my pest controls and uh, the the warriors of my pest is is the uh, bees and uh, what's called the ladybird beetles and praying mantis and uh, lace wings and the birds because of one just observe the birds and i think that the several nets in my garden hello so several nets in the garden and ah, okay so when the birds they hatch their uh, the, the chicks the small babies they within an hour when observing that that birds pick up at least nearly about uh, 20 to 30 times new kind of uh, what's called uh, the larvae or insect to feed their the the chicklings so that means they are taking lot of the pest from the plant so the bird diversity is so important in order to control the pest when you apply so much of the chemicals it take out all the beneficial insects as well as all those uh, the insects and birds won't get the feed and also simultaneously all the killing the beneficial insects so that you are keep on spreading lot of the things so then the other coming to the like a home uh, the 
composting that's that is the spelling mistake that is a <laughs> the home composting that is and that is the black gold i can say and you can do the pot and uh, pipe composting uh, you can see a number of online videos available and you can do the simplest way to make it your like a gardening it's so simple just take a the perforated or uh, old uh, pipes and uh, just insert into your uh, the pot or backyard or front yard, very available, available. I see even the, now some municipalities, they started uh, this installing the, the pipe compost in, in front of the, the home so that people, they can throw all their waste into that one. They come and every week they collect that waste rather than going to the, the uh, landfill and they collect this uh, the degradable waste to turn into the compost. In the US, used to like uh, each city have their own composting units so they can make a compost and give it to the people. I think that's the one thing uh, every cities in India, they should start doing it so that there is no land filling goes. And recently also I have heard about the discussions going with the Ministry of Water Resources and that uh, Jalasakti telling that uh, they are going to thinking about um, the, the taxing the waste. If you are wasting too much and you have to tax the, and the waste so that that way people are more responsible than the waste. And it's not only that, so a lot of this waste enter into the water that enter into the, the seaweeds, then also they become a, a nuisance to the river's life and river flows. So you can do the number of way to compost. Uh, Rani is doing a lot of the work on uh, educating the people, lang mines and how to compost, uh, those kind of the things. And also there's not only this one, but also the how we can uh, consume the things and produce. Here I give you the one simple example of the pipe composting and you can uh, put all your waste into that pipe and uh, then you can see this is the, the, how it looks like. And also you can uh, the, make your uh, vegetables and creepers grow along that compost pipe. So they hide that compost pipe and looks beautiful, but they're supplying the liquid nutrition to the, the plants that they're growing. And like kind of this multi use of this composting, but you do number of way to the composting. Sometimes you not have wanted to compost, chop the vegetables and dry them, powder them, and just spread on the, the surface of your uh, the plant pot so that you know uh, smell anything coming, but they can provide a kind of a good mulch. And mulch is one of the most important when you do the gardening. So there's several people asking about uh, uh, what is the multi layer garden? The multi-layer garden is nothing but is the nature. How the nature, how the forest and uh, the things grow. In the forest, there is a number of stories, what we call the canopy layers, and they have the different layers of plants growing so healthy. The, the very lot, too much the light needing vegetables, they are plants, they grow top, and uh, the medium, like uh, the partial shade, they are going in the under canopies, and some they are shade loving, like a leaf vegetable, they go on the ground. So that's not necessarily five layers, you can do two layers, three layers, four layers. Sometimes the layer is only one, but they're all are growing the intricately designs. So that way you can grow a number of things. So this, this way, you are uh, maximum utilizing your space in the balcony, and you are growing all the vegetables, and when the vegetables interact each other in the root systems, in the mycelial fungal, and that supply one nutrients to other plant and other plants the, the other uh, nutrients. So that way they interact so much and the nutrition value of that vegetables so high. For example, you grow the tomatoes with a basil and a tulsi. So that makes the, the, the tomato flower is much richer than the just tomatoes growing. So they need isolate. These plants are kind of the social living things. They need the different plants going together. I just give one example. You can try your own uh, local varieties, grow them together based on the plant, uh, the pot size. And uh, minimum you can use about at least 50 to 60 centimeter diameter pot or the long pot that way, that way uh, at least like a two to uh, the six by two by feet or six by feet or four by feet, something like that. Eight square uh, feet boxes, I'm going to talk in the next one. And uh, this one is uh, like, a, I just build, uh, many people told that uh, they not have a space, but they are very small balcony, or uh, they are very small, one the window side, they're very small space, they can use it. Then I designed this specifically to meet the urban people. They're living in a very small space, in apartments, they not have any much big space to grow. You won't believe that how much vegetables are growing here. So this is the one by like a 40 by height and, uh, 
the like uh, usually 1.2 meters that's basically about uh, four feet and uh, two feet wide the small boxes you can build with the uh, pallet to it to waste the wood or use any material to build that one and then you can line them inside just in case you not want to all this uh, the loose soils comes out if you are living in uh, uh, in the balcony or within the house we are doing so you can line that with uh, some kind of a uh, the, the the mess or uh, things and then you can uh, start to growing uh, whatever the the vegetables you like to eat and this is one i started uh, may 20 i built a couple of days early but uh, we filled the soils in the may 20 and first seeding i started in the may 20 and by within a few days you can see a lot of that the growing and this is one plant that's what because uh, I just also transplanted from the under growing the small pot I started earlier. So that sometimes weather is not good, you can start that uh, inside the house, you can start the, the small pot of the top of the refrigerator that's warm. So you can start with the ceilings growing a bit before even transplanting outside. So you can put them together. So within like a two days, 21st and that within a month. So this you see that by June 10th, and uh, you can see so many things growing and uh, the, the flush of the vegetables. We are already started harvesting. Uh, this is yesterday, like the, my daughter and both of them are harvesting. Uh, the morning, they can take their basket and pick up the, the, the choice of the leaf they need for their uh, burger or whatever the salad they are making. And in this small pot, you can't believe I'm growing more than 15 types of vegetables just in eight square feet. So we have a couple of types of amaranth. There's the amaranth we have mostly used for like what quinoa for the seeds one, but this one is a vegetable one, the, the red and the green, and within the green there's a couple of the varieties. And then you can grow the aragula, it start eating within the 15 to 20 days. Same thing, you can grow the small red um, radishes in the winter and uh, fall. Then uh, spring, they grow within 15, 20 days is harvestable. They're so fast growing, you can eat leaf as well as uh, the radishes and parsley. This is the one forgotten vegetable. They're so nutrition rich and so much iron in that one. Just eat whatever the way you use the spinach. It's much more nutrition dense than the spinach. And then you can go the basils and chilies and tomatoes. There's kind of a second layer. They wear the food bearing the trees that can grow. Sometimes the cherry tomatoes become a, such a long growing because if you the support, they, they become a kind of a creeper. They grow about a 10 to 15 uh, feet long. And the sweet potatoes is kind of the ground cover. And also you can, uh, in the fall, you can harvest a lot of the sweet potatoes in the ground. But meanwhile, you can harvest the leaf and uh, tips, uh, twigs, and uh, you can make it uh, use as spinach. That's also nutritious, dense food. Then you can go the cluster beans. If they're very hot climate, dry climate, they do fantastic, what you call a gour bean. And then also you can grow the cowpeas, long beans, and jukinis, okra, what you call bendy, or ladies finger, and bitter gourd. That is, I'm talking about only one uh, types of that, but uh, there is the other boxes. I'm growing about six to seven bitter gourds. It could be rich gourd, it's a bottle gourd, snake gourd, uh, loki, what you call uh, bottle gourd. So that way, Basically, like in pot, you can grow so many varieties of the gods together. They grow top and become a creeper, then like that. And then you can, the drumstick, you can start the drum. They started the drumstick here as with seed. And within a couple of months, they become a tall, they become a top canopy uh, thing. So just the eight square feet, it will uh, supply enough, the, what's called uh, your, uh, Vegetable, vegetable nutrition is coming from that. You can eat the fresh one. You want eating instead of eating the, like a, a big ball, the fresh one you harvest from your garden, growing in the biodynamically. And just you need the one tenth of that, that, that kind of the vegetables enough for you to meet the nutrition requirement. And uh, this, this is the kind of keep on replacing by season. So that uh, now I'm growing this one and uh, within a few months and the, all the, the fruit bearing and the top canopy go taller. And the ground one become a kind of a clear because we already harvested uh, the mustard green and uh, uh, lettuces, spinaches, that thing. You can take out again that again, start planting like a weather become cooler in September, October. You can plant uh, cool season crops like radishes, coriander, uh, methi, what you call fenugreek. So like that the sequence of every three to four months, you're changing the ground cover, keep on growing. In one pot, you are pretty much to grow all you need. 
in terms of the vegetable the requirement. So this is just a zoom out uh, portion. I took uh, this snaps uh, this morning, and uh, you can see so much of the plants growing together in that eight square feet the garden. And you can pick up, keep on uh, the, the idea of keep on growing. You can keep on harvesting them. Never let them into maturity of these leaves or the, the fruits. So that when you leave the fruits to maturity, then they stop producing. They think plants think that already they have their, the new generation is ready so that they won't go. So you can leave the only one or two plants at the end of the harvest to grow for the seeds. And another important is keeping them to the, the seeding. At least leave a couple of the plants go for seeding. The plants grow in your pot. The year after year after they grow in the same places, they have tend to have the more adaptation to climate, adaptation to your conditions. In the subsequent year, they become much robust and much uh, the, the fighting their uh, the infestations and also their flower will keep on increasing. That's what the beauty of the growing your own seed saving. You can save the seeds with your friends. You can exchange the seeds I like that. So they can basically diverse the food systems around everywhere. And other things, uh, when it comes to the, the home garden, it is watering. There is so many ways to the water because of like, like me, I have traveled so frequently and I have so much of the busy life in office, but I not have wanted to spend my time in watering every day or uh, frequently. So that we are, uh, there are a lot of many inventions happening in the, in the market. You can look into so many things. That is a, that's an easy place called Cleoli, then uh, in the Netherlands, US, and India. And you can build your own way of uh, what's called pot irrigation, diffused water irrigations. And just take uh, the pot and you can just uh, the insert, the dig the pot inside the, into the plant, like this one, the second picture. And then you can fill the water, then water slowly percolate uh, through the river, the, what's called osmosis, then they reach out and that's the plants the roots. The absorb. The good thing is about there is no overwatering, there is no underwatering because of the, the when the plant uh, absorb the water around the pot and pot keep releasing. This way you are not overwatering, underwatering. And simple concept is very simple here. Take a small pot and uh, find a cork and water entering to that pot, then go into the next pot like that so that the pot is always filled out the water so that you can always use. But you can invent your own way. You can use the what is called the children's uh, the the clay to make the clay. You can make a kind of a small ball to insert the, the end of the pipe, or you can go to the local uh, what's called pot makers and uh, the clay pot uh, uh, makers. Ask them that uh, I want like this kind of the design. Can you make it? They can make it for you and uh, make it like a rough surfaces so that uh, you can. Uh, water them. So these are just uh, putting the few concept and adopted the number of them. We tested them, but everything is working the different aspect in different way. Here I'm putting in just in case you wanted to invest or design your own way. So what I did is like, a, I not want to worry about uh, uh, turning on my the water every day or something like that, but you can put it like a, the float, put a small tank and uh, what's called the 20 liters or 20 liters of tank like that. Then put like a, the, the float wall, usually in the, your, uh, uh, the toilet basins or something like that, that whenever water, keep the water levels, uh, keep same level. Then you can use this, this in Egypt, uh, we call this the Ola and same thing available everywhere in the world. You can take that uh, rough Ola is available in a few pounds and a uh, couple of pounds you can buy them in the, the pottery shops or you can go to anywhere, you can buy that, uh, the clay pots, doesn't matter which shape, it's just to adapt that to your garden shape design. Then the water can enter this one, then fill the water, then water start percolating based on the soil saturations and uh, what the plant absorb that water. So that way you can connect all the spots in the garden and when, whenever the slow water absorbed by the plant, then water level goes down, then automatically fill back. This way, you don't have to worry about uh, the watering your garden when you are away, so that keep on watering. And the, it's not only that, it saves your time and effort, but also it's a no, or, the most of the, the problem with the gardeners, the beginners, is that they're over, over watering. So there's over care, there's too much love that kills the plant because of they keep on adding water, keep on adding the compost, keep on adding the washing their leaf. This way, they 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 too much the care kills the plant. That's what I see most of the comments in our WhatsApp group. And that's the that's too much. So that uh, you kind of this kind of water is managed well. Keep the soil moist, not wet. 
and uh, then also if you are the bigger backyard you can use the soak houses soak soaker hose or something like that we can discuss on it in details but the home gardens you can use whatever that fits well and here is another things uh, is most important in the rural uh, the area doesn't matter which part of the rural even africa or in asia uh, in india and often you can see if you walk into the rural because i'm coming from the village i know this uh, the, the problem and this kind of the the what's called uh, the water coming from the bath or uh, this the standing uh, in the street and now there's a lot of the investment doing by the government and panchayats the building is the what's called uh, shaujalaya the toilets and they also putting the sink pits at uh, the soak pits and often this soak pits the standing there the sitting there but not utilizing often but the space is the not limitations you can turn this soak pit the water entering into the street become a nuisance and uh, become malaria bad smell look ugly you can push that bath water and often these water to enter the rivers as well that pollute the rivers as well you can push this water to the soak pit sink pit coming from the toilet and around that the the pit and you can plant uh, the the few good uh, the home garden species like uh, papaya and uh, the banana mangoes curry leaves and a lot of the creepers like a cluster the what's called uh, the lab lab beans what you call uh, wax beans and uh, turais and lot of this uh, home uh, the, the gods just plant one or two around that uh, pit i used to see it when when uh, the childhood and every the, the kitchen or uh, backyard there's always something is growing around that um, the the waste water coming from the kitchen but most important here is and uh, in the in the ancient systems are like olden time and the people are using all the organic material for the washing and cleaning for example use the ash for cleaning or uh, soap net for washing and even like uh, using all the bath soap everything so organically they using so there was no issue of the entering any chemical to that water and this is where we need to switch to the 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 materials used for the bathing and cleaning the utensils are the cloths and house home cleaning you can use the bioenge enzyme and you get eco friendly soaps uh, probably i think this uh, the resilience lab they creating lot of this kind of the products you can use them or you can find out your own local resource you can create your own way there's so much of the resources available online to create all organic uh, material this is very very important when you are uh, the cleaning the rivers or all the water waste water go to enter the river and drainage systems instead of building the big big drainages and throw, sending all your waste water to the drainage system that enters to the rivers but you can make it the soak pit eco friendly villages you can grow the greens you can just look at the, all this every house they have their own greens growing from the water coming from that and also this uh, soak pit helps to reach out the ground water that water enters instead of going to flow away evaporates it reaches the ground water like every water using that in the village is that turn into the, the like a useful and eco friendly then turn water become clean green and plants has a super power to filter out those the chem whatever the, the the dissolvable substance in the water so that can reduce the the pollution going to ground water and the river even like uh, we tried a couple of times that one soak pit you can put that uh, kind of a the small tp around that one see this ugly spot you can turn into such a beautiful spots and the healthy environment friendly you can grow a lot of the things around it and provide the environment birds chirping in the morning and the backyard so this kind of the things this is what required to build in the systems in urban landscapes i see a lot of the houses they are big backyard you can turn that this is the one uh, experiments i did in my back and the us we are growing so much of the vegetables and starting with a small like a, my first garden when i was in america when i went to the market uh, to buy a cap the capsicum the organic capsicum one capsicum what you call the simla mirch it's about one dollar per capsicum being a vegetarian and family then if you go to market you are spending nearly about 2 to 300 dollars per week just to buy the vegetable 
I thought that this is this is in shame. Then uh, meat is cheaper than the vegetable. Like one pound of the, the beef, you can get it for a dollar, but the, the capsicum is to cost the same as one capsicum. I don't know how insane the system works, but this highly subsidized system they made that work way. But uh, we just started about as a beginner. I never uh, tried that one uh, being into the software side, the space scientist, uh, but uh, let's try it one small thing with my wife and Priya, and we started the small garden with my daughter, eight by eight. Within, like, within the season, and that turned into such a diverse food system. I keep on exploring, then put the nest, what you call this uh, support system for that. There's so many vegetables growing in this, that's eight by eight square feet. That is enough to supply our small family there. Then they thought that, okay, this system is working, and uh, why not we can build that into the kind of a nature park? So that as yes, you living in the urban space, landscape, and often working in uh, too many busy life, and you always felt that I don't have time to go to nature. And I found that you can build nature, bring the nature back to your backyard, bring the nature, build the nature even backyard, your rooftop, your balcony, so that you can that exposure to the green. So that is one of the best things you can do. Hello? Is the successful. Hello? Yes, Rani, can you say something? Hello? So, um, is it very clear, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes sir. sir. It's okay. Oh, okay. Someone said hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please okay. go on. Okay. Thank you so much. So, here is like, um, that's always I tell all my urban living friends that uh, if you don't have time to go to the nature, going to nature is always ultimate. That's the best investment you can do for your children, your health, yourself. And you will not have the time for yourself to grow yourself. Go to the farmer, help the, the farmers nearby, living in the cities, going to the weekend to this, help the farmers as a voluntary. The farmer is getting little, but your help, but you are getting more. Your health will be also back. So that one of the important things about playing with the nature is that you are putting your hands in the dirt. It's a dirt I call the mother uh, soil. So the soil has the actinomycet, so much of the good, the bacteria, and that's when touching the soil, walking in the soil, playing with the soil and dirt. As you see, the newborn babies or the kids, they, 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 they are, uh, the play always, they put the mud into their mouth because they know that this is the really they need to build their gut bacteria, gut biome. And that's the nature they provide the, what's called uh, the fighting mechanism for the, all the diseases and things. So this is when we play with the nature. I went to it, uh, the testing is a concept around the, my, where I'm living in the US and also my friends, so many people who are doing the gardening, they're hardly visiting the hospital. That's very, very interesting things. And why is that? Because of when you play with the plants and garden, nature, green is one thing that triggers uh, what is called your, uh, the, the stress hormones, reduce, reducing agents. And uh, when you play with uh, nature, plants, and uh, the dirt, and the soil, uh, instead I shouldn't be calling dirt, that's what we should be calling the soil always. And living soil, this is what we call the, the stress hormones. And coming from the office, take a cup of tea, sit in the, the garden, play water in the garden, those things, all the stress will be reduced in a few minutes. Then this is increased your the serotonin oxytocin levels in your brain. That is what called a feel good hormones. So that you are basically much feeling better and you forget all the tensions and stress out when your brain is joyful and uh, away from the stress and you are thinking probably something more. If you joyful yourself, your family will be joyful, your friends will be joyful. Joy is within, that's where it starts with uh, growing your own things and uh, connected to the nature. And that's what I call bring the nature back to your family. So, hello. So this often uh, your backyard become your what you call a the the research lab for endless experiments. I started with the eight by eight feet that turned into the the fifty square feet. Then I made into ten by. Uh, 10 of this rice bed uh, on the, usually the most of the gardens in US and urban landscape in the Western world, they are mostly the, the useless, the turfs, the grasses. 
they spend so much time to just to maintain the grasses. Then I just dig out that grasses and put a few raised beds and uh, mm -hmm. the, the compost, everything, and they're growing. Then you can try all the different, all the experiment that started in the back at growing the tons of the vegetables. And then you can test the different kind of the soils, test different uh, the vegetables you growing in your back. And then I tell the recommendation to people that, oh, this vegetable combination works very good for uh, in this garden, then the people start listening to that one. Then I tested number of different seed varieties coming from the different source, friends sharing that one. Then I test that one, what will work best and how to reduce the pest and uh, management. And also using this, this data for researching uh, my own. So that way, this is basically your garden one, you can grow one single pot. That is the endless research lab for your kids, yourself and entire family. So the this is where come back to the the multi-layer garden when you do the garden always you can try to increase the number of the species you can, you can grow together and uh, it's just a small one i'm uh, talking here it is like a the the plenty of product producing the garden but we also provide the heaven the habitat for the birds bees butterflies in the morning you go and sit in the garden you see the the sounds of the bird they start in the during the Brahmi time, almost like a one and a half hour before the sunrise, see that the beautiful sounds of the birds and uh, butterflies and kids can play with them. Here, just a one example, I'm going like sweet potatoes as a ground cover. In the summer, they grow vigorously. They can cover the soil, reduce the soil operations, and then also keep the soil healthy and keep all the living organ cells uh, healthy. And you can grow the chili, okra, and as a the, the mid canopy, the vegetables and you can go with all the sponge guards and ridge guards uh, as a uh, thing in the top then you can put a lot of the bird houses and all this is like a bees houses into that one so they protect your uh, plants and any the the things coming there so this looks a beautiful uh, the, the scenario for yourself so even that can what we used to do that one in, uh, in the big yard backyard but when I, we are traveling from the, the across the world, uh, moving from that to different the, the country, now we are moved to the, the Cairo and not have the luxury of the backyard, the ground floor. Here we found the rooftop garden and we started the same thing from the scratch when we moved here. Nothing was there. The, the, the rooftop was completely become the kind of a uh, the waste disposal site. They just become dump at throwing all the waste there. We clean it up and put a few pots there. We started the garden and that turned into such a beautiful garden. The birds, the kids build uh, so many bird houses at their activity. Then you can start harvesting a number of things. And so many birds started visiting. I can't believe that there's a colorful birds here coming. There are hardly any birds used to come. Now you can see in the morning, sit there outside, you can see so many birds in the, in the backyard. So this is basically what I'm talking about. It's not just a home. The growing uh, gardening it should be wired that the rich gardening is not just for the only the food, but is the entire health system so vitality. Food vitality, I talked about earlier, you remember, if we eat something organic, biodynamic, and uh, less chemicals and grow in the symbiotic relations, always they have the more vitality, what you call panic food. Prana in the food is more. So it is very important to diversify food. Often you grow plenty, you can share with the friends, of a new grow few variety, the other can grow few variety. You can see exchange the food, the each other, and you can also dry them out. So if you have excess tomato, chilies, and those leaf vegetables, you can sun dry them, put in the glass jar. You can use them in the in the off season the things so that you don't need to put them the preservatives anything. So that we used to do like like lot a lot of that. Uh, especially the kids love that uh, the the tomatoes, dry tomatoes, so expensive. You use on your pizzas or your pastas or even you can recook them to your the dal, sambar. They are fantastic flavor. They return the flavor, but you are not. I see that a lot of the market in India, the when tomato, every farmer go tomato at the same time and the tomato prices slashes down, everyone throw into the, the street, even they're not harvest. Instead of that one, you can start just chop them. You can use in the, the sun dry them. You can keep in the freezer, then uh, no need to add anything there, just sun dry them and put that glass jar and you can use it anytime. So then you, are, you can sell that, the dried tomatoes, even most, more expensive than the, the fresh tomatoes in the season come. Because of the tomato only, that the fresh slash is only for a couple of months. And later you can take out this dry tomato and all the tomatoes grown out, so you can play directly. So this farmers to the plates is so important to enrich the lives of the farmers and reduce their burden 
and the suicides happening that one. So these kind of the things we're growing so many things in just like a small garden. So I'm just being a transferring the what you learn in your small backyard, you can transfer that into the family farm into the small farm. I see the, the land holding in India is so small, but every farmers there that one they grow only mono crops. Just either they grow the one crop, either uh, the cotton or wheat or rice or anything, but they can put at least one tenth of their land for themselves. So the small the portion of their one acre or two acre or anything, then take one tenth of their land. They can grow a couple of the, the fruit and nut tree. This is one uh, the picture I'm giving from the Odisha, where uh, we are flying the drone and across the few districts and you see that one saw a lot of this, uh, the, the kind of uh, still in West Bengal, Odisha and any rural India, still some farmers, still they are keeping their, what you call the home garden, uh, kitchen garden themselves. So they are small pond and they grow all the vegetables, they have the herbs they're growing, they have some cash crops and also timber species they're growing, the coconuts as kind of the cash crop as well as uh, the fruit crops, then also a couple of the cattle, they can have plenty to eat throughout the season, they provide the milk. And even in fact, the cattle in India is it's in anciently, it's not for the milk or the meat. Cattle was kept as a recycling the nutrient. They can recycle with all the kitchen waste and the crop residues. It takes about uh, three to four months to compost, but the cows they can make within 24 hours. You can feed this uh, kitchen waste and the uh, uh, by evening, so we are composted. Thanks to make a flurry to make uh, the biogas, something like that, you can enter. So, so this is the way, just a, what we can do at a garden, you can do at a home garden because of many of you access to the farm. Even I give the ideas to the people in the urban area, so, so many people come forward that. I'm asking that one, if you have the land around the cities, you can rent that land, you can turn that into small, small patches like a uh, 10 square feet, 100 square feet based on the needs. Then you can uh, the, the rent these lands to the urban living people. A lot of the IT industries and uh, like IT people and uh, soft jobs, their desk job working the whole day sitting in the chair like me. And uh, they, they always do not walk too much and sitting all the time in the chairs and you never expose to this one. Weekend, we want to do most people, they're watching the movies and eating the couch potatoes, eating the food, uh, sitting at home. Instead of that one, you can rent a small, like uh, the, the land around your cities, go with your family, you can grow your own thing. There is the poor people maintaining that land. They can take care of your land for entire week. You choose the vegetables, you can grow there, go and harvest and eat. So these kind of innovations we need to have around the uh, around the cities so that they can enjoy those kind of things. So basically, I'm telling that what used to be uh, like a lot of the fallows and rice fallows, for example, left fallows after the harvest ends. And often a lot of the, the city dwellers, they buy so much of the properties and they're not do, doing anything, just left uh, the abandoned. Why can't you just take that one, rent them, you can grow your own vegetable, all those uh, left out when I travel uh, in uh, indo gangetic plain from Delhi or Lucknow to the Calcutta, I see a lot of them. <laughs> Because a lot, of, uh, lot of the empty spots, uh, then I say, what are these, all these uh, like vacant space? They told that these are the, the lands purchased by the rich people as an investment, but they're not doing anything, just left fallow these things. These are the areas they should be planting a lot of the trees, like a uh, lengths of the cities. They, 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 what we're doing also, we're doing a couple of like that, we're buying this uh, kind of uh, empty la the plots and then uh, you can rent them if when they're not using. Then put the compound or fence around it. You can play about the 20 to 30 different uh, the fruit trees there. They grow them instead of the, the left vacant, they provide the habitat for the birds and a lot of fruits. Even if you're not buying it, let the poor people eat them, harvest them, eat them. So this way you can protect the nature. You can turn out all that, uh, the, the millions of millions of uh, the empty, the, the properties, unutilized, we turn them into the gardens and greenscapes. So here is, we're talking about after rice is harvested, the, the 11 to 12 million hectares of the, the fallows left unutilized. What we're doing in Ikada, we're taking that one with the CGR center, we are now, after the rice is harvested, we're putting the ender, the legumes and pulses or vegetables there, they're growing, they are moving from the single commodity to the compound productivity. So this is where the, the concept of the, the dry, and farming or uh, this is not only the dry land it's it can be applied to anything this was just i look at the the farm the growing in our own farm the put the the, the drip line for the cotton cotton takes uh, several months to 
the growth, six to eight months, and that cannot be required long time to cover, so that the soil is exposure. The exposing the soils to the sunlight, it's basically you are losing a lot of the, the mineralizations, you lose a lot of the nutrients in the soil. Soil never will be exposed. You can always be covered. It should be covered like a, recently our senior colleagues and uh, Dr. Lal, we got this uh, World Food Prize. He's always telling about every talk, the mulch, 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 cover soil. Soil is kind of a uh, really cloth for the mother nature, soil cover. So always cover the soil. It can be anything, dry matter, and, uh, the rest plant residues are the living plant cover. You can grow the so many things. Here we're just putting like a, along with the cotton takes so many months to grow. You can grow so many vegetables, like at the start vegetable, 15 days, 20 days, 30 days, 15 days, and like a two months. By the time the cotton cover the entire soil cannot be, you're already harvested the six to seven crops. It's like a farmer harvesting a monthly income. Uh, if they do it very systematically, very well planned, with diverse crops, they're meeting the local needs of the, the city life or the village uh, people, what they need to buy. So they, they can uh, stagger that kind of the planting, the needs of the, the present day and uh, present season so that they can get kind of a, what salary, salary person, they get the monthly salary, a farmer should get like that. They can harvest one crop every month, then intermediate income is coming, but it's not only intermediate income, but uh, using the same resources, same drip line, same uh, the resource, water resources. And uh, when the plant go interactively, when you are going the number of the herbs and the species together with the cotton, it reduces the number of the pest infestations attack on that one. But then you can, a farmer do the mistake, if they see one or two pests, then think that pest is already affected, they spray the things. When you are living with the nature, it's always allow the, some, the insect to eat there, some of the share of the nature, so not to worry about that one. So with that, uh, I hope that is uh, pretty much, uh, uh, would like to talk about this one, but I think uh, we can leave more that time for uh, discussions and uh, connections. And uh, what I would call production follows functions, let's leverage the technology and local intelligence. That is most important. The, the farmers has a super intelligence power. They know how to grow. Even like a, many people, they're not educated, but they, they know how plant grows and how they need to be tended, how to do, do all the things. This is required a local intelligence and but provide a technologically in terms of the market for them, WhatsApp group for them, how to sell their products and uh, how to these uh, different species or uh, different variety of the plant they grow. These are technology you can provide them increase them so that often people ask me that uh, oh you are asking to grow the food at home but what of the farmers does no it's not that way it's basically helping the farmers in number one way you are helping the both way consumers and producer and uh, when people eating the the real food at home and they know that what real food is taste like that then they start encouraging the, the the real food coming from the farmers and that way so that you can build the real system whatever the farmers they're growing now is not able to meet if you grow like a dynamic way hide uh, the value, the premium products in terms of that. So that's still, they need to meet a lot of the demand. Now in the COVID situations, everyone know that the food and uh, vital food systems and the healthy living is most important. That helps us to build the, the what's called immune system, body, immunity to the body. When you are joyful, you're eating the healthy food, your body automatically immune to the, all the virus. Instead of worrying about the too much of the viruses, of course you can keep that, uh, the social distancing, but the main thing is we can grow these things. Our, so our kids uh, that started the lockdown garden, within a month, they started in March by April, they harvesting. Now their garden's full of the growth. So this is the way we can start it, but Samuel's helping the farmers in number of ways. So this way, this, with this, I would say thank you for all your patience and uh, the listening to this one. And uh, we can open for the, the, the discussions. Over to Rani, or uh, Subha. <coughs> okay, so we now open the house for discussions. If uh, anybody has a question, you can uh, raise your hand uh, so that we can, uh, you know, one by one select people who, who would uh, be uh, putting up the question. So, if you see on your right hand side, 
you will find a box which says raise hand just raise hand so that we know who all wants to ask questions alternatively you can also put your questions on the chat <laughs> okay so there is a question by savita murthy uh, she is asking request you to share the recording sir so that we can share with my children who are away all right we will be doing that uh, if you can just go to our page it is called people the resilience lab we'll put the details on the chat uh, people the resilience lab facebook page you go there and you will find the recording over there so is there some other question uh, okay jasmeet walia is asking is there a document out there that can help urban folks like us to know which plant is compatible with the other ones for example some plants require more nitrogen yeah this is what i am saying that when you grow i know so this is the typical questions coming from the the, the beginners or sometimes they want to grow and it's always the you can go with a multi cropping what i call multi layer planting so that you can grow in kind of a legumes with the non legumes and basically they are nitrogen fixers so that you can benefit each other so that way we can grow three to four types of different vegetable together so they grow always you can add a one legumes with all the groups you are growing for example you are growing the the cow peas or something like that long uh, yeah, long beans or amaranth those kind of things and even you can go to peanuts with that one so that's always some nitrogen fixing uh, the plants are there but you also like uh, if you not have that enough space but uh, you are doing the kitchen composting that provide a plenty of nitrogens to the plants as well so always i recommend if you go even like a small garden you are not space at least when you grow the big pot instead of buying small small pots buy the big pot but grow all things in one pot that's really taken care of the your questions on uh, the, the nutrition is there also some kind of uh, chart which is available for various uh, agro zones uh, that these are the time for uh, planting this is the time for uh, applying compost maybe this is the time for watering more so is there some kind of uh, you know uh, uh, package of practice which is available for different crops you know a chart kind of a thing where beginners can easily refer to <laughs> yeah so in fact that is the very the, the interesting questions and need of the, the hour as well and uh, in uh, europe and us where we are doing that one they called what's called uh, the the growth zones and uh, grow time then usually they the usda us department of agriculture and uh, all the university agriculture system they publish by each cities and each uh, country so each county they have this kind of a the chart so when to start what vegetable to start what are the cool season crops what are the summer season crops then also based on the temperature zone humidity zone they call the, the what's called eco zones so that you can go in the eco zones i think india also there but too wide but uh, you need to do it for the individual states i think this is where uh, agriculture university take a lead to publish this thing i think it's available that one but uh, india is being a, such a large uh, country and we have so many eco zones and uh, from the so you need to have the specific to the cities and uh, locations you're growing of course this is available and i cannot say the one available for everyone for everyone but you need to uh, uh, inquire with the local extension uh, departments they might have so other one is would be try your multi cropping systems and you know that one within a season or two then what works for you what season work for you so that you, you build your own chart for yourself so any more questions please feel to ask ma'am I, i am having a question hello sir yes i can hear you uh, dr mohan sir uh, will you throw a light on how uh, how the medicinal aromatic plants can be planted on a rooftop for building of immunities during this post covid scenario sir yeah uh, when it comes to the immunity just not only the the medicinal aromatic herbals it is entire food systems what you eat basically that makes because now i see that a lot of people going for the 
particular uh, brahmi or something like that uh, aswaganda something eating that one no i would say that one if the, your entire food you eat it is makes you immune and strong you feel good the simple thumb rule is that when you eat your food after eating the food you feel energetic you have the, the exuberant energy in you if you feel lethargic means that food is not for you so that you can check yourself like that but uh, as you say that uh, some some people they always uh, emphasizing only in the herbs and things okay that's required some and you can grow like a if you are going like a tall uh, vegetable plant something like that and you can also put a couple of the the pots for uh, the herbs in, in terms of for example you want to put the, the mint or oregano or sage and uh, those kind of things you can grow as uh, these are most of the herbs are they kind of a geric means that they are not required too much of watering so they can uh, careless basically so that they are kind of a careless herbs herbs all the herbs almost all the herbs they grow except for the brahmi they require kind of the going in the, the moist conditions but most of the, the dry herbs they are growing in the dry condition so you can easy to grow you can try out in along with uh, any plants growing you can uh, plant them inside they can grow or if you are growing the rice bed plants you can always put them in the corners where the water is not going too much so this always options to grow together they are, they are pretty much because the root system are quite deep they are not complete with the, the surface <coughs> layer so it benefits much for all the plants and also it's good repair repellent for insects if they 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 are repel the bad insect attracts the beneficial insect as well uh, thanks for that that's a good question <coughs> thank you sir thank you Sir, I wanted to ask you about um, uh, you know, like you mentioned about the farmland people invest in these. So, uh, in fact, some people had approached seeing me gardening. Uh, they have lands which are lying idle, and I suggested them to plant some natives in. And uh, have you heard about better work grass? Is that so? So the problem is solving with uh, the soil. The voice is breaking. I couldn't hear the question clearly. Uh, no, a native tree uh, on a farm, like you said, in 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 a city like Delhi, which mm -hmm. is uh, you know uh, not all the trees would really uh, do well, I guess. And you want, yeah. to, like you said, the soil is the main thing. So uh, wouldn't be, uh, don't you think it's sensible to have trees and the grass as a and then grow whatever because they have lost a lot of crop. They try doing uh, you know. Cropping vegetables, which were you know, which they like to eat, but then with a lot of rain or with dry weather, they have spoiled a lot of uh, uh, crop. Can you hear me, sir? I heard that uh, the grass and trees. Are, I can uh, just type in because of that. Uh, I did type. I did type in the chat. Ah, uh, this is uh, Swetha. What is vetiver? Oh, you're talking about the vetiver grass, right? Right. Okay, so vetiver is is one of the, the most uh, uh, versatile grass, and uh, this is uh, really fantastic for building the soil and uh, soil conservation, and reducing erosion, also reclaiming the soil. Instead of growing this uh, Bermuda grass or something like that, in the cities they can also in the roadside they can use the vetiver grass. It provides the fodder as well as the very fantastic soil builders, and also this is a uh, Along the roadside, very very far, this is uh, what's called uh, water infiltration. Rainwater directly go to the ground. Is, uh, we can reclaim the complete abundant land with a very very. Also, we can play on the the polluted uh, the, like drainages uh, and uh, rivers. We can plant the very very grass along around the water. That's that, that's possible. That's very good uh, choice for the reclaiming the soil. So whoever is not uh, asking the questions and uh, please turn off your uh, uh, mic because of there is a lot of noise coming in the background. Also turn off the videos if you are uh, not uh, using it, so that uh, band will be much better. Okay, so yeah. Ha, Chandra, your your presentation was very ha huh, very nice and uh, as we are actually. Uh, recalling our UG memories so from since UG, you are doing uh, all kind of adventurous work. So here we are learning lot of things. Okay, from your 
graduation uh, articulate into the scientific way and uh, many people uh, uh, in the rural so they are working uh, unknowingly things but you have given scientific touch to them so as uh, regarding uh, the soil health uh, then uh, moisture soil moisture so that help the uh, plant to grow better and uh, by looking into the your all slides so it could be a, one of the uh, good entrepreneur can become okay uh, in the urban areas where they can motivate the people and they can uh, encourage the things as well as nature can be developed through this uh, gardening so nice bro. thank you rajesh thanks for that uh, nice climate reminding the our, uh, the graduation life in fact uh, there's tons of the ideas always people come back to me that sir can i do this one like like a Last week from Dibrugarh, there is a guy come back. Uh, sir, I am uh, coming from the US. I need to invest in uh, uh, coming back to India. I want to do this gardening. And uh, what should I do? I told that he, he has some ancestral property, a couple of acres around the, the Tejpur, not Dibrugarh, Tejpur. I told go ahead and uh, you can uh, convert that land to small uh, the, like a, the pieces. And you can rent them to the city urban people. They come and do their gardening like that. Someone wanted to like uh, the farmers not getting the, the mango, the profit because they're selling at 15 rupees, but the supermarket same mango selling at 45 to 60 rupees. I thought you create the WhatsApp group in the villages. And uh, often this uh, they harvest the supermarket, harvest the mangoes much before, right? So then they spray the something to not to mature. Then uh, before putting the cell, they spray the ethyl to mature in the overnight. And they not have the real taste or flavor. And ask him to, okay, you can harvest both the farmers. You can instead of uh, paying uh, 15 rupees, tell him that I'll pay 25 rupees. You can harvest them, put in the small baskets with uh, the, the grass or uh, what's called uh, the wheat husk or the paddy husk. You put that, uh, uh, go to ma ma mature mangoes there, then give to the each uh, the apartments and tell the people that we harvest wheat whenever they are mature so they can benefit. So that way, you become really click. You become so super, uh, like a... The, the providing the, the farmers, farmers uh, income doubled and uh, then consumers also uh, getting the very fresh goods on time and then he's uh, charging for five rupees for his own uh, transportation everything. So each case is uh, everyone is benefiting here instead of the, the big markets making all the money. So like that, I have tons of ideas. If anyone wanted to do the entrepreneurship, do the thing that we can always share. I'm open for that. I'm like telling every graduates, there's so many problems in India and related to the food or uh, system, youth should join this uh, crusade of the ecological services like what the, the Rani and uh, the Ecolabs and uh, universities started doing these kind of things. So engage all the people. Now in the COVID, I see a lot of people, uh, reverse migrations, they went back to villages. I see the farmers down there, they are going, going, going back to they're farming, they're growing, now they're feeling that. I think so, village life is much better, but again, it's economic drive. The, the industry paying high in the cities, again, they come back. So it's always, you have to balance the systems and decentralize the systems instead of all the metros hosting all these IT industries, let them sit back into villages and do from the work from the home. So they, they, can, they can increase the farmers to grow this kind of the healthy food system and live, live in harmony with nature. So there's tons of ideas that certainly you can explore. I see Naveed raise the hand there. The, the, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, it was wonderful listening to you after a long time. Uh, I have a small question. You mentioned in your presentation uh, by giving example of Rajma and I think tomato, wherein yeah. very few varieties are coming to the market and uh, how much uh, nutrients we are losing in our diet because of these limited uh, varieties of things in market. Right. So uh, I just want to know, are there any agencies wherein we can get all these uh, so-called traditional varieties just to you know, uh, boost uh, uh, or just to widen our uh, nutrients in diet. Yeah, the thanks Navi. Not... Uh, yeah, that is very, very interesting questions. In fact, uh, and in fact, you are the, the forest officer so that you can also work with a lot of this uh, uh, the rural areas of those people so that uh, you can also drive this what called uh, native seeds with the uh, tribal people and ask them to conjure, then provide the market for that, can bring one nice entrepreneurship to the 
forest community and uh, living with nature harmony. But as you, for the many people living in the cities, there is a, now I see that a lot of the online seed market, they started selling the, what they call heirloom seeds or native seeds. So now the market, because of the, the market is growing, the demand is growing, so that those are coming back. So they go to the rural villages, still like a, the people bring all those traditional varieties. Only the supermarkets, they are not getting them because supermarket they have specific, the same green quality, the same nice looking, all the things. So that is not able to meet by the, the native seeds. Like Tanasi was started the seed bank, they are showing a lot of the seeds. Like that, so much of the banks you go to in, the, in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh, even like UP, and many places I see in Rajasthan. Uh, they started like a local seed banks, so then the farmers, and especially led by women. Those are the ones who are really crucial of the saving the nature. They are protecting the seeds. So that this one, like you go to the each villages, they take someone of the youth who can start this kind of a, the native seed banks. Then they can uh, the save the seeds and everyone harvesting the seed, you can give to someone. Okay, when you harvest, you can return back to the seed bank. So like a, I'm giving you 10 seeds, so you have to return back to the 50 seeds when you bring it back. That way, you can build the seed bank, you can uh, donate to the the, the farmers, that way you can increase the biodiversity and bring back the last diversity in the food system. Thanks, Naveen. And okay. this is being a big officer, uh, this is a good way to start as well, <laughs> to build that nice harmony with our forest officers and the native, what's called uh, a tribal people. I see the next uh, other hand is uh, Vikas Ji. Hello. Han, Namaskar. Namaskar, Janashekhar Ji. Actually, my question was very much similar to the previous uh, uh, listener. Actually, my, mm -hmm. my question was, I have a very small land. I wanted to grow deshi um, vegetables that is completely mm -hmm. missing in the market. I actually yeah. have lost uh, what is the taste of the desh, deshi vegetables, which I used to eat uh, uh, when I was a kid. So is yes, there any could. way I can procure the seeds uh, of the deshi tomato, deshi tomato, deshi bhindi, etc.? Because I'm missing it, missing it from my heart. How can I get see, and procure seeds? Yes, see, one, India is such a being a diverse country with tons of uh, the, the, what's called uh, species diversity. I just talking about the chilies or the rajmas. One state like Uttarakhand have the more than 50 types of the rajmas. Think about the any state, they have so much of the types of the, I visited uh, when I used to go to India, I used to the local farms and uh, the sea. There are nearly about 50 to 60 edible plants growing in the, the local farms. Like you see like a Kirsali, all the, the what's called Hattariki, Simbal area, Karchika, number of things like that they grow. And uh, if you bring that into the, the, the system and also educate the people, people often think that uh, like a cabbage, cauliflower, anything comes under the market, supermarket, these are the vegetables. No, there are uh, over 7,000 species, sorry, 700 uh, the, what's called uh, uh, the edible plant species they're growing as a weeds they consider as a weed weed so you can bring it back those kind of the things of course there is a now there is a the, there is awareness is coming up then small seed bank they started uh, this producing this stuff like a gajan and the girl started selling the native seeds of this one you can order that i see like i am not uh, able to mention all the names here but you can search up the native seeds markets in uh, india there are a lot of people coming up and other one, the simplest way is that, see, when I was living in America, I can grow the 237 way of the vegetable seeds in like 63 tomatoes. What I did is simply, I throw the network in the, the, in the, the group, look at it. So I'm going to the start like a, um, a different varieties I'm going to test in my backyard, see if it can work, to share this, the seeds. All the farmers, the farming community, they, they share the seeds with me and I tried them, uh, the, grown them, then I can share the seeds back to them. And you can organize the like annual day or the, during the, the, the monsoon time or during the fall time. You can organize the within the cities that what you call the spring fling or fall uh, days where people come and bring their seeds and plant. They can share each other so that way you can do it. But other the quickest way is just go to villages and ask the people what are the, what are the native varieties you're growing. Then they can share with, share with you. So this way is different way to bring back the last varieties into the farming system, food systems. Thank you, Vikasji. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, hand raise, uh, Sivanand Mehdi. Siu. Good morning. Good morning, Doctor. 
No, sir, I don't have any question, but I just want to congratulate you. I've been doing a good job. Really, I'm proud of you, sir. Huh? Thank, Thank you, you so much. You are the, being a doctor and taking care of working with a lot of the farmers, interaction with them, with uh, yeah. livestock. So you can, uh, whoever comes to the people, comes to your hospital, tell them you yes. can grow a lot of different trees and species together in the villages. Yes, that to be, they, can, they can certainly benefit. Thank you so much. Okay, sir. Sure, sure. So, sure, sure. Thank you, thank you, Sue. Thank you, uh, thank next, uh, raise hands. I see the Karthi, yeah. Dachidananda Murthy. I know you are in the part of the, the Grow Your Green group. Uh, you are asking a lot of the questions there. Yes. So please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir, uh, good afternoon, actually. So actually, in your garden, you have mentioned four in Tito. How many mud pots actually? Yeah. See, I'm, I'm kind of a scientist testing different things with the kids. Uh, we have about a... 60, the plastic big pot is what I started earlier because at that time uh, the mud pot wooden box was not available when I moved to this uh, house, uh, moved to this city. And then we shortly start exploring, then I come to know that one, the, the lot of the mud pots available. Then we bought this uh, during lockdown, kids, the school, uh, not to school, their hope. They, they, we started, I got about another 16 big mud pots they started. And then there are a lot of questions coming that we not have enough space to keeping that pots. Do we have any other alternatives? Then I started, it's called eight square feet boxes to the bring that way. So it's always, there is a room for experiments, try out that meets your uh, uh, needs and uh, space. You can always try that. My recommendation is always go for the bit, a bit larger part than the small, small, too many pots. Okay. Okay, sir. Thanks, sir. And uh, next question is Galaxy. I know who is this Galaxy. Are you there, Galaxy? You will raise the hand. Okay, so that uh, if they not have any specific questions. Uh, Rani, do, did you look at uh, those so many the questions in chat box? You can read out if they... They are some relevant or on the chat box. Um, somebody wanted to know about the native trees. Ah, this is the one uh, very most important. When you go to this the urban cities, they always bring the exotic species to the plant in the cities. And I won't even go to the agroforestry, always they try the exotic species because of uh, there is some created the market for that often. But uh, the issue is that Hello. And I recommend your kids in the homeland and you always choose the any trees that grow within the 100 kilometer radius that is basically the native. And that brings a lot of the resilience and adaptability to the, your soils and conditions. Not much effort to try out. So always mix out these uh, native species is key to the, the sustainability and resilience and climate change impact will be reduced much low. Yeah, thanks for the questions. You always find a lot of the native species. Now forest department, uh, they also started, uh, they know the local condition. They always know switching to the lot of the native species like neem, tamarind and uh, the jack fruits and the karanda, so many different way like uh, amlas. So just you need that, what you need in the entire year, what kind of things, you need a mango for eating or uh, amla for uh, your uh, daily consumptions and you need a neem for some other properties, tamarind like that. You can use what we call a multi-purpose tree species. You can choose that fit into the systems as well. In fact, like uh, there must be the recommended that at least 20 to 50 trees growing per acre in the, in the buns and often this Birds, wherever the trees are, they not bring out the, the beneath the trees because of the shade or something. But they not realize that when the trees adding so much of the litter in terms of the leaves to the entire the system and their farm, then also become the wind breaks, shelter belts, they reduce a lot of evaporation, transpirations, they reduce the, the, the loss of the soil moisture so that they have what they were losing a little bit on the ground of the tree, but they are losing so much in the, in the trees uh, outside the outside within the farm. Then secondly, they have provided a lot of the others, the support. They provide the shelter for the, the birds and uh, insects so that they, that can uh, the reduce your pest infestations. And importantly, they also produce a lot of the fruits as well. So that's basically treated them as a beneficial rather than a 
they are uh, taking the part of the soil land. Hello, sir. Okay, so am I audible? Yes, uh, Savita. Yes, yes sir, Savita, sir, I can hear you. Sir, I am part of Grow Greens. I am from Mumbai. Thank okay. you so much for all your inputs. Sir, now my question is, can we keep these uh, wooden boxes which you have mentioned, no, for multi-layered setup? Mm -hmm. In the staircase, we live in 14th floor, we don't get direct sunlight, but we get uh, sunlight through windows. Is it sufficient uh, to yes, have uh, a if you are getting bunch the, of plants? Uh, if you are getting at least about uh, four to five hours of sunlight in the windows, you can use that one. Also, you can customize the, this kind of uh, the, the wooden boxes to fit on the staircases as well. So then you can design the, instead of going the, a lot of the hot sunny vegetables, you can go partially shade loving plants. Like most of the, the, the what you call the greens, you got lettuces, spinach, coriander, menthes, they all the required of partial shade. Even a couple of hours the light is coming, that is, that's enough. And uh, yes, of course, uh, you can design uh, based on the slight conditions, things you can grow. That's possible. Okay. Thank you, sir. Hello, Hello sir. Who is this? Uh... Hello? Hello, sir. Uh, I, sir. This is Vivek. It Vivek, was wonderful oh, time Galaxy, you are the one. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was wonderful big. time listening to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have a doubt that can we grow in styrofoam boxes, sir, thermocol boxes? Uh, yeah, that's a few questions earlier asked me as well. And uh, there is a different type of the styrofoam thermocols will be there, but uh, uh, you can either coat the styrofoam with a linseed oil that provides that kind of a... Uh, this also, the, some, some people telling that, that the styrofoam is the carcinogenic and uh, it leaches into the soil. And uh, plants have asked to fit it out. If you're going ornamental, you can go with the styrofoam. And but styrofoam also very delicate. Huh? When uh, you are uh, doing something, someone hit that one or something that is it damages. And uh, better so, if nothing, no options, you want to go some ornamental, you can try out. But uh, good to go with uh, mud and uh, what's called uh, terracotta pots or uh, clay pots and uh, wooden pots. And say so any other thing is not leaching out kind of things. Yes, sir. thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So, any other questions in the chat box? Uh, I'm not sure which, which, which where I'm there. Question I think we are done with the questions in the chat box. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is the the Rani. So you are doing the fantastic job. We really good luck for you. Were uh, rejuvenating the rivers and uh, you're educating the the Bagalpur people. I hope so you're getting all the support and uh, one lady started uh, the dream to turn into rivers into clean. That's really working out. And uh, there's a lot of this, uh, as you said earlier, there's so many, the cloth industries and uh, the polluting, often the people regulations in that only industries, but uh, individual houses, they contribute a lot of the pollution. And if you educate the people how they are uh, living because of that water, go to the rivers because the same rivers is their own rivers. You bring the what is called authority or uh, what they call the rivers is there. It's not the government or someone is taking care of. We have to take care of every lakes, rivers, ponds, anything there in the village property is, belongs to village and village people that protect it. And you bring the sense it's what's called a... Uh, uh, self -led. This is my property. It's not a government property. That kind of things is very essential. What we're doing. Also, bring the people of the sustainable living, living with less and uh, living with nature, and uh, uh, use uh, what's called uh, less environmental polluting agents, uh, the chemicals in that one. It not only the speed up uh, the, the the pollution agent, but it's also harmful to the, the children, skins, all lot of things. Like uh, my daughter did this. Uh, exhibition project uh, I said that one with I guess and it's telling about uh, so much of the pollution is coming from the the fashion industries if you hear the the cotton dhoti or uh, lungi or uh, cotton pant and it's so less uh, the the white one not colored one synthetic you same jeans with a uh, white wash jeans throat jeans that takes about eight times more energy than the regular genes. So see, the, the fashion industry is really is impacting as well in a number of ways. So this is where the going back to the, the, the cotton and organic cotton, that too. And then we can go in the organic colors. And these are the things the fashion industries is also switching. This is basically start from the 
the people, not from the industry. If the demand for the, the organic things and organic cloth that, that really uh, change the way we live. And uh, if we create the demand, we can get the things. Rather than blaming the government or uh, blaming the system, we change ourselves. I think that is the way to, we can change the world. Thank you so much, Chandru, for a very interesting talk. It was really, I mean, uh, a learning, huge learning experience for us. People like us who are already working in these kind of areas, even for us, it was a huge learning experience. The way you have been able to bring the entire biodiversity at your terrace space, you know, inviting all types of bugs, all type of birds, all type of, you know, I, I mean, it was uh, bees and all. So it is a very, uh, very beautifully you had presented the entire idea of the oneness of nature and how it is so important for us to do that so that uh, each of the different parts of the biodiversity, they do their work towards keeping the balance. So it was extremely interesting for us. Um, as you were just mentioning about your daughter's uh, you know, presentation about the uh, fashion industry, uh, People the Resilience Lab is also working on this because Bhagalpur is a textile town. We oh. we produce silk. We produce silk, uh, and this silk is uh, we are util utilizing reactive dyes in the in the uh, city, and all of them are being drained. All the effluent is being drained without treatment into the river. So people is playing a big role in educating the public that you know this need not be done. And it is very important for us to also tap high value market. You know, that there are people who are interested in buying natural. They're interested in buying. Uh, so we are kind of educating the weaver group, the, uh, the people who are uh, engaged, the traders, and also the, the people who are going to buy that fashion. You know, if we create a demand for natural dyes, it, is, it, it becomes very important for these industries also to, to produce these stuff. So we are, yeah, we are working on those areas. Anything and everything linked to the river. So our uh, whole idea is that even um, how to grow, even yeah, we are trying to promote trees for beekeeping. We are promoting trees for, um, uh, for uh, sericulture also. The whole reason is because if we promote growing of trees and we, uh, we discourage deforestation by linking it to livelihood, people will then really understand that, yes, there's a linkage between the river, between the soil erosion and how the river will finally survive. You know, it will, it will revive. So the whole thing we are trying to, to link in our program. Oh, that is the fantastic. Uh, I think that is the way we should be each villages and a crusader like you should be the doing fantastic job you're linking every aspect of the living and the people you see one people they see that such a clean river flowing and a lot of the green around their street and the trees and the people will be more peaceful when they look into the, all the clean environment that they're eating the good and the good environment that brings out the violence as well this is not just only you're doing the cleaning the rivers but uh, cleaning the mines and the violence in the, in the in the cities as well that is a fantastic most commendable work we are thinking and also you bring a lot of this uh, what we call a cottage industries to produce this uh, uh, environmental friendly soaps and cleaners buy and germs and workshops and educating children bring them i think all these things make matters a lot i think every cities they have like a one Rani like you or one Regenus Lab, you, every city must have like this. So this is a way to grow and uh, fantastic all your team and uh, doing the great work and uh, congratulations. And uh, always we'll be get in touch and we can always uh, uh, open up this kind of uh, discussions and uh, bring the entrepreneurship to the youth. Youth is the one they're moving away from the this kind of a system. They're going to city for menial jobs. Then they get uh, diseases and uh, they're, they're devastated with all the urban life. Then they themselves end up in uh, very bad situations. If you absorb all the youth into this kind of uh, ecological uh, the projects and everything, they live well. Then that's the, what the transformation of lives. And today is the International Yoga Day, by the way. So, and this is what required the, the yoga is not just only the doing the the poses and the twisting the ball. It is everything how we will live every day, every life and how we can contribute to the nature. And uh, this spiritual system starts with cleaning our own mind, contributing to nature. That's where the, right. the, the eight links of the yoga, this is one of the link of the, the limb of the, the yoga, 
being uh, the close to the nature and eating the right food and uh, the right uh, way of living all that that's part of the live yoga yoga is not just only doing in one day in the year but it's the every part of every time is it should be our the, the spiritual journey and i wish you all the happy international yoga day i know that a lot of people they send me the, the message that they have different events going together they are attending some yoga classes they are going to some uh, organize some events in the cities uh, not uh, outside the cities but they are doing in the home uh, yoga session something like that so letting many people they couldn't able to join but i see already pretty good participations and uh, i guess a lot of uh, people streaming the live video and uh, yeah if you any other specific questions you can shoot out and uh, i have the grow your greens that just like a lot of people asking me that once and how to start these things instead of i'm so busy life and it's very difficult to reply individual emails or uh, things then i started this whatsapp group if i ask the questions i reply to one then it's good all but they end up in a lot of the the really really great growers and it people professionals teacher professors and all over the world about 30 countries join the group and they become a, itself is the like a kind of a the guiding people they tell the one i'm not uh, there and these people always address all the questions there. This is the way to help each other to grow together and uh, protect the environment and nature. Thank you so much for uh, providing upon us to speak here and exchange my ideas and uh, with uh, every global citizens. Thank you so much, uh, Chandru. It was really, really nice having you with us. And I'm sure this should open us, you know, more opportunities for more interactions whenever we feel that. Uh, you know, it will be important for people to have people like you on board. So, hoping for more collaborations, more learning from you. Thank you so much and all the best for your series and uh, congratulations for the uh, completion of the fourth uh, foundations of the, the Resilience Lab. Really like that people. I planted the people tree here. That's so nice. I planted the people along with the uh, the name that's become my source of inspiration. They grow such a worst climate anywhere, anytime. That's real resilience. Exactly. The way you choose the people uh, for your uh, logo, I think that shows that this is the real resilience. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So with this, Bye -bye. we begin the, with this, we end the session and we begin the other session with our, uh, uh, resource person uh, Swati Sushmita Lakda. So we welcome Swati uh, on board. And Swati will be talking about the high value uh, merchandise that, that we can develop out of trash. So we are talking about uh, trashes. We are talk talking about trash which lands up in uh, uh, rivers. Especially we have seen Champa getting trash from all around. So we are talking here about uh, the dry waste, the wet waste turns into uh, compost. So we have been discussing this all through, but now we are talking about the high value merchandise which we can develop out of the dry waste. And here again, we are not talking about plastics. Plastics are recyclables, which uh, the Kabadiwalas, they pick up and they get paid out of that and they finally take it and those things are, up, are recycled. They are upcycled. But there are other things which do not get recycled and they're thrown away. And those things can be utilized to turn them into things like handmade paper, like packaging boxes. And there are many such things which can be uh, 